Play, the center of the gaming universe. Today's Play, we review Army of Two, the amped up new shooter from EA on the PS3. And we've got our review of the new Lost game. In today's cheat, Kristen Holt will show you how to disarm and behead one of No More Heroes' toughest bosses. And see your tax dollars at work in the latest adventures of secret agents Bob and Steve. It's game time. to X-Play. I'm Morgan Webb. And I'm Adam Sessler. We're coming to you from G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Monday, March 3rd. On today's show, we've got some hot man-on-man co-op action in our review of Army of Two. Woo! Then we board Oceanic Flight 815 and hold on for dear life as we review Lost. And Kristen Holt stops by with a cheat that will help you increase your No More Heroes assassin rank. Plus, another Bob and Steve adventure is locked and loaded. But first, it's time for all of the top headlines in today's gaming update. Well, thank you, Morgan. PlayStation 3 owners should be very happy to hear that the existence of God of War 3 has finally been confirmed. A teaser after the highly anticipated sequel appears on the instruction manual of the new PSP game God of War Chains of Olympus. And the ad reveals very little information. Surprise there. It simply shows the PS3 logo next to the words coming soon. Also, we're pretty sure God of War 3 will be a PlayStation exclusive. I don't know why. There are new rumors that film production studio and distributor Paramount may take a stab at video game publishing. The Viacom-owned company has an impressive portfolio of properties that include The Godfather, Mission Impossible, The Spiderwick Chronicles, and yes, even Beowulf. All made great games. If these rumors are true and Paramount sets up its own publishing division, new questions will be raised in regards to the licensees of Paramount's properties. Companies that would likely be affected include EA, Activision, Ubisoft, MTV, Nickelodeon, and THQ. Now, Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots is a Apparently a game so big that the game's creator Hideo Kojima is having issues with the capacity of the almighty Blu-ray disc. During an interview with a Japanese blogger, Kojima revealed that there simply isn't enough space. Still not satisfied with the quality they can do, Kojima says he's always talked with his team about where to make cuts and what to compress. There's no word on whether or not the game will end up shipping with multiple discs, but I suppose we'll all find out on June 12th. Let's just hope they don't cut the part that makes the story make sense. All right, that's all for today's gaming update. Be sure to visit us on the web at g4tv.com slash xplay to continue getting all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. Now let's head over to Morgan, who's got a review of what could be the latest co-op phenomenon. It's Metal Gear. It's not going to make sense in the first place. Mm. Army of Two marks one of EA's first forays into mature territory. Will these two soldiers of fortune be able to pull off the M-rating hat trick of killing for profit, blinging out their guns and cursing like sailors? Well, find out in our review of Army of Two. Army of Two is essentially EA's shot at making a Gears of War type game that focuses entirely on co-op play. Now, I hear some of you out there whining, but Morgan, EA is a giant corporate devil who wants to subjugate Take Two and make games bland and boring. And to you I say, shut up, Army of Two is good. Welcome to the Army, soldier. The game takes place in a crazy alternate universe in which private security contractors are effective and confident. You choose to play as either Rios or Salem, two former Army Rangers who embark on a most excellent adventure. <laughs> Their quest to visit exotic locales, kill interesting people, and get paid for it will take you all over the world, from Afghanistan to China. As a two-man team, the gameplay revolves around working together and covering each other to progress. Borrowing a term and mechanic from the MMORPG genre, Army of Two utilizes aggro as a key feature. When you shoot at enemies, you build up aggro or hatred toward yourself, thus drawing their fire. When your partner shoots at them, the aggro shifts to him. Thus, a large part of the game is spent using one character to distract foes, while the other flanks them undercover. 
It works well and provides structure to a tactic that can frequently be frustrating in other shooters. You depend on your partner to help out in various ways, especially when you're wounded. He also functions as a gunner when you happen to find a shield to carry around and gives you a boost in those hard to reach places. Unfortunately, your teammate's AI isn't nearly as advanced as the enemy's, and he tends to be, let's say, less than effective at times. This guy is such an Big ups, yo. The real appeal of Army of Two is playing co-op with a real-life person, either online or split-screen. If you loved co-op Gears of War, here's a game practically custom-built for you. Team mechanics even extend to the multiplayer, which features two versus two objective missions that make good use of the co-op dynamic. I got you! Being mercenaries, money is a primary motivator for Rios and Salem, and there's a good reason why. As long as they're paying, I don't give a what they think. You need cash to exploit the excellent weapon modification system, which allows you to customize all the guns in the game. You can even pimp the weapons out to draw more aggro, and to ensure that your Uzi will indeed weigh a ton. Controls occasionally prove slippery enough to get you in trouble. It's hard to get your bearings at times, especially if you've been outflanked. Also, a parachuting sequence that uses six-axis tilting to maneuver is less than welcome. For the most part, Army of Two is a solid experience that bodes well for EA's commitment to new and original properties. A four <laughs> out of five. The game's good. I know, surprise. We weren't expecting that. The game is good. All we'll right. take it. Well, Army of Two ships out tomorrow, but will it become the next big action franchise? Well, what we do know is who the current top PS3 sellers are, and this is today's X list. At number five is Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Everyone I know is playing this online, but will it continue its multiplayer reign once Rainbow Six Vegas 2 comes out? Mm. Number four is Devil May Cry 4. I wish the devil would just cry already. Sometimes you just have to let it out, big guy. Number three is Grand Theft Auto 4. With all of these pre-orders, you'd think some big game company would try to aggressively buy Take-Two for a billion dollars. Oh, wait, it was two. Yes. <laughs> Coming in at number two is MLB 08, the show. The animations of the crotch grabbing and tobacco spitting in this game are simply stunning. Way to go, mocap crew. Tune in tomorrow if you want to see a review of this one. And our number one is Dynasty Warrior 6. Because apparently gamers didn't learn anything the first five times. Coming up on X-Play, Kristen Holt's got a new cheat that will guide you through one of No More Heroes' most difficult battles. Then we review Lost via Domus and see if this mystery is worth solving. And our cover will probably be blown once secret agents Bob and Steve arrive. It won't be pretty. Brought to you by the U.S. Navy. Navy, accelerating your life. Much. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7 and 10, only on G4. But now that Duke Nukem isn't going to come out in 2008, or maybe it will, uh, what do you guys think about it? Welcome back to X-Play, and thanks for your question, Jason. I can't seem to muster up any interest in this topic at all. Exactly. Once we knew it probably was going to be coming out this year, and went back to how it was before, which was forgetting about the game. It's, 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 it's really not that exciting. Well, honestly, like, we've been hearing about it for so long. It's just, it can't, you, no one can muster any interest in it anymore. Like, when it comes out, for sure, I have it in my hand, then I will look at it. Exactly. And really, it's just the curiosity factor, because the other game, the 3D Realms, helped it out, Prey, really was mired in shooter styles that are so old and ancient, I expect the same thing from Duke Nukem Forever. Hopefully not. Well, being an ultra-hip assassin, it's hard work, especially when it means you'll have to deal with Destroy Man in order to get the number seven ranking in No More Heroes. For some aid in dispatching this pompous, costumed jackass, we turn to Kirsten Holtz. Thanks, Morgan. I'm really good at those types of things. Destroy Man is certainly one of Travis Touchdown's most difficult foes, mostly because he's tricky and ruthless. And then there's the whole laser beams out of his crotch thing. Ouch. Here's a surefire way to avoid his pelvis plasma blast and come out on top. Say you're an aspiring hitman, working your way to the top of the ranks, and you get stuck on a really tough opponent. Some folks might call Don Corleone, but if you're Travis Touchdown, all you gotta do is call us here at Cheat. 
Destroy Man is one of the hardest targets early on in No More Heroes, with a bunch of attacks that can really bring the pain. Luckily, he'll lend you a hand by announcing when he's gunning for you. Destroy Team! If you keep an ear out for his taunts, he'll be a cinch to take out. The Destroy Punch is a shockwave that radiates outwards. It's easy to avoid. Whenever he raises his fist in the air, scoot away as soon as you can and you'll be safe. Destroy Man takes a little breather afterwards, which is the perfect time to slip in and do some damage. Another close attack is the Destroy Spark. If you roll around back of him, the bolts won't hurt you and you can stick a good combo on him. He's also got a few ranged moves. Every once in a while, Destroy Man will shoot a Cyclopsian Destroy Beam from his eyes. You can either strafe around him or perform some sneaky somersaults. About halfway through the fight, Destroy Man takes to the skies. Well, the ceiling. When he shoots his Destroy Cannon, position yourself in front of the flashing klaxons. He'll knock himself back onto the ground, ready with one last attack. Yup, it's the old laser crotch, or as he calls it, the Destroy Buster. It's just like the I-beams, but way more powerful. Use the same tricks here. Circle strafe or tuck and roll, but try to end up in range at the end of the attack. He'll taunt you, and that's when it's time to move in for the kill. It won't be long before you're ranked seventh and collecting your reward. You cute little hitman, you. There you go. Congratulations. Now get back out on the streets of Santa Destroy. that hard. Be sure to check g4tv.com slash cheat for the latest tips and tricks. Right now, I'm going to send it back over to Adam and Morgan. Thank you, Kristen. Travis Touchdown is full of panache, much like all of Studio 51's larger than life characters. So, which one is your favorite? Well, that's today's poll question. Is it A, the handsome man from Killer 7, B, bad girl from No More Heroes, or Andre Ulamida from Killer 7? Log on to g4tv.com slash explain and let your voice be heard. Stay tuned, we'll have some preliminary results for you later in the show. Google and Microsoft make the bid for Dig. The feed starts in 60 seconds. Pick up the phone and call now. Welcome back to x -Play. The last time J.J. Abrams had a hit show turned into a video game, we were given something that was supposed to resemble Alias. It was better suited for Guantanamo stress test. That show about the people on the island with the bears has been turned into a game. But will it suffer the same fate? Ha! Here's our review of Lost via Domus. that eye-opening thing could only mean one thing, a game based on Lost and just in time for the middle of the fourth season. Timely. You might not like what you see. You got that right, John Locke. This game is lame, like halfway through season three lame. Please just go away. The main character here is Elliot, an extremely peripheral character Lost, even more irrelevant than Nikki and Paolo. God rest are unnecessary taking up plot time souls. You need to focus. Elliot has amnesia. Elliot has a backstory. Elliot has a past. What is his mysterious past? Don't know, don't care. There's not much to do here. Run around the beach, talk to the Losty. Have you seen my boy, Walt? Yeah, didn't he grow to be six feet, seven inches and had to be written off the show? Not now, man. Walt! They're silly little missions, like helping Locke with the fuel leakage, or slipping past Jack to get to the jungle. It's easy to distract Jack. Hey, Jack, go do something incompetent for the castaways. The storyline takes place during the first two seasons of Lost. That's when the best stuff that was never answered happened anyway. Like, what was up with the hatch anyway? Why do you find it so hard to review a game? Why do you find it so easy? It's never been easy! We never did find out. If you're looking for any clues to the TV show, you won't find any answers here. What's up with that? I'm the guy who's about to put his boot up your butt if you don't stop asking questions. 
the game can be completed in less than 10 hours. That's not even a weekend, and certainly not worth the $60 price tag. I can give you exactly 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42 reasons not to buy this game. Not now, man! Whoa! So, where are we with this game, really? We're screwed. That's where we are. This game is only for the people that are really, really, really into Lost. You know who I mean. The ones with the Mr. Echo action figure on their nightstand, Rose and Bernard fan fiction manuscripts, and a Ben poster on the wall. Listen to the whispers in the air. They're telling you something. Don't buy this game. Lost gets two alts. Whoa! Whoa! Out of five. <laughs> With the recent release of the prequel God of War Chains of Olympus for the PSP, we thought we'd catch you up on where we last left Kratos. And we're doing it in a timely manner. Here's our games in 60 seconds for God of War 2. Kratos, chairman of the Board of War, expands his celestial business plan by reducing his fellow deity's favorite cities to ruin. Zeus decides adjustments are necessary. Bearded bolt thrower sends the amply loined cloth of Colossus against Kratos. Kratos losing. Zeus suggests Kratos deposit his powers into Blade of Olympus. There's a catch. You must forever serve me. Not on your life. Fine, yours then. Moss memoried matron Gaia intervenes, urges Spurn Spartan to join her and the Titans against Zeus. Gaia tells Kratos to defeat the Sisters of Fate to change his past death by Zeus. A little of this, a lot of that. <laughs> the Sisters gain Loom of Fate, used to go back in time, fight Zeus again, Zeus wins again. Not so fast. Athena takes a bullet, Kratos. <laughs> Regent of Rage, unmoved by the revelation of Zeus as dad, urge cannabis-clad titans forward for final assault. Kratos, anxious to hug father's throat. Zeus, your son has returned! All right, we have to take a quick nap break. I'm all tuckered out. It's been a long day already, I guess. When X-Play returns, we meet up at a clandestine location with Secret Agent Bob and Special Agent Steve. Watch out for friendly fire. But first, let's take a look at who's the world's best in today's leaderboard for Burnout Paradise. about the nerd life ward life if you dig this then you dug this because i'm all about the nerd life ward life on march 11th this show available on g4 on demand X-Play. Earlier in the show, we asked you who your favorite Suda51 character was. Well, we have tallied your votes, and right now, the current leader is Andre Ulamida from Killer7 with 44%. All right, have you ever thought about a career in super secret secret agenting? But I can't speak Farsi, you say, or my SAT scores were in the low 800s. Eh, don't worry. The bar for this line of work can't be set too high. Come on, look at the news. And if two guys named Bob and Steve are on the job. Previously on Bob and Steve... I can't believe you just killed our contact. Everything's on the way when you have a helicopter. I hate you so much. When America needs a hero, when freedom stands alone, America's top agents will defend our liberty from those who wish us harm. Let us join Special Agent Bob and Secret Agent Steve, two of the finest official unofficial splinter cells. Would you just drop it? All I'm saying is, why would anybody want to play that song at their wedding? I don't know. Because they like depressing people? Tell me about it. Now every time headquarters puts me on hold, I'm going to want to blow my brains out. Pow! Oops. Bob. What? Damn it, Bob. We needed to pull the data off the computer. Oh my god, I think there's a TV show about secret agents. That's not a TV show, idiot. Someone's tapped the vid feed. Oh. We can do that? Identify yourselves. I'm Secret Agent Steve, and this is Special Agent Bob. Hello. Hey, are you guys a Splinter Cell team too? It is against protocol to disclose whether or not we are members of an elite secret task force. Uh-huh. Okay. But you guys are a Splinter Cell team, right? I think we lost the audio feed. Please state your code names. I'm Agent Nighthawk. 
This is Agent Keymaster, operating frequency 6, 8. Nighthawk and Keymaster? Wow, that's nuts. You guys should never have to worry about anything with names like those. Agent Nighthawk. I mean, what was it like for you guys as kids? I mean, hey, I want to be on Nighthawk's team. Keymaster is kind of gay, you know, but... Those aren't like... their real names, you idiot. They're code names. Just like my name's not really Steve. Really? Well, your name's not really Bob, is it? Yes? It is against protocol for an agent to disclose his identity. Hey, you know what? I got a new name for you, buddy. Captain Ass <laughs> Gadar, all right? Join us next week when Steve and Bob disarm more terrorists with their amazing cunning and stealth. Are you saying- Your sister is a whore? Yes, I am. But that's not a- Whoa! All right, well, we're currently all out of stock on more show, but it looks like we'll be getting a fresh shipment in tomorrow at 8. Oof. On tomorrow's show, it's baseball a palooza as we review MLB 2K8 and MLB 08 the show. The two franchises will fight to the death in a steel cage match. My money's on the game with the baseball in it. Yeah. Then we preview We Fit and see if it's the next guy master or just the next step by Reebok. Who uses that? It's a step. That's it. Anyway, we also talked to Epic Games VP Mark Rain about Gears of War 2, why Epic's worth a bajillion, million, billion dollars. Plus, we have a sneak preview of the zero punctuation review of Devil May Cry 4. You're watching the weekend block of X-Play. Another episode starts right after this, you lucky bastard. <laughs> so what did we learn on today's show? Um, well, Lost sucks. Uh, don't buy games based on television shows. Games based on movies are bad enough. Games yes. based on television shows? It's just, it's just a logical extension. So if you're buying it... <laughs> <laughs> Play, TV's most watched video game show. Today on X Play, two baseball games go head to head in dueling reviews. We'll weigh in MLB 2K8 and MLB 08 the show. Then we'll preview We Fit and find out if the balance board will become the next gaming phenomenon. And we'll give you an exclusive sneak peek at Zero Punctuation's review of Capcom's Demon Slayer Devil May Cry 4. Get your rank up, it's game time. This is the show your parents don't understand. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Morgan Webb. We're coming to you from G4 Studios in Los Angeles on March 4th, Tuesday. On today's show, the baseball brawl begins as we review both MLB 2K8 and MLB 08, the show. The two games will square off on this stage, and the loser will be executed. And T-Squared is back with more tango torching tips for Call of Duty 4. Then, we'll try not to break a sweat in our preview of We Fit. But first, let's have Morgan give you all the top headlines in today's gaming update. Thanks, Adam. Infogroms, the publisher and distributor of franchises like Dragon Ball Z, Alone in the Dark, and everything under the Atari label, has announced that Phil Harrison, former Sony Worldwide Studios boss, has been hired as the company's new president. Harrison will work closely with the newly appointed CEO of Infogrom's David Gardner. The two plan to place a greater emphasis on the industry's online markets while maintaining and improving the Atari brand. Well, they're going to need luck with that. Harmonix, developer of the hugely popular rock band, will be awarded bonuses upwards of $208.7 million should the game continue to exceed publisher sales expectations through 2008. As long as the game's impressive sales continue, Harmonix shareholders would be eligible for incremental payouts from Viacom and MTV Games. As we all know, Rock Band was an instant hit during the 2007 holiday season and has so far managed to sell through 1.5 million units in the U.S. alone. In addition, over 2.5 million downloadable songs had been sold as of mid-January. Speaking of millions, Capcom has announced that Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles has shipped over 1 million units worldwide. 
The zombie-filled rail shooter is the second Capcom Wii game to achieve this goal, following Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition. But it's not all good news. Capcom has confirmed the release date for the Wii version of Okami has been delayed by three weeks. Anxious Wii owners will have to wait until April 15th before getting a chance to try out the game's updated controls. Could drawing squiggly lines on your TV get any more fun? Well, that's all for today's gaming update. Log on to g4tv.com slash xplay to continue getting all of today's up to the minute video game news. But now, let's send it over to Adam, who has the first half of our double header. All right, thank you, Morgan. Three weeks, what are we gonna do? Well, spring about to be sprung. Game companies are rolling out this year's crop of baseball titles, and we've got reviews of the big two in today's show. First up to the plate is Major League Baseball 2K8. When it comes to Major League Baseball, the 2K series has been the big boy on the block for quite a while now. Tell it goodbye! MLB 2K8 doesn't like to mess with a good thing. This is still the best looking baseball sim out there. Dodger Stadium has never looked more majestic. Hey, look at the guy wearing a 2K sports shirt. What a sellout. The players look like their real counterparts, don't they? Pedro Martinez looks like Pedro Martinez, a man who loves to attend cockfights. It's true, look it up. So what's new this time out? The 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. The pitching, what else could it be? That's just out of the zone. Everybody knows the key to managing a good baseball team is the pitching. A fastball swung out and missed. And also turning your back when the entire team is doped up. Allegedly. Swung out and missed, he struck it out. It's not easy. It's going to take some major toggling of the analog stick to really get the flow. The analog stick is also a big part to making slick fielding plays. On the ground to first. Nice play, Nomar. Hope you do it in real life. And also like the pitching, the fielding will take a bit of an adjustment. He's in there safe. Oh, when they run into each other. You'll get better. It takes practice. And his throw is in time for the first out of the inning. It takes time. Curveball. Got it. If you don't like baseball, there's also the home run derby. That's where A-Rod truly shines when he's looking out for himself. That's a teammate. Plus, there's the trading card feature where you can unlock such items as stadiums or uniforms. That shirt smells like flaxseed oil and lies. MLB 2K8 is just as good as last year, and the pitching, even better. He froze him that time with a pitch right on the outside corner. They give MLB 2K8 four big poppy home runs. A swing. That one is in the right center field. This one has a chance. Out of here! A two-run home run. Out of five. Play ball, baseball fans. Play ball. The 2K franchises have been around for a while, but sadly, not all sports games survive as long as we want them to. In today's X-List, we take a look at the top five sports games we want back. At number five, we've got NBA Jam, Midway's original arcade baller. And yes, we want to hear those classic words, he's on fire. Number four is Punch-Out. Maybe Little Mac would still be around today if he would have just listened to Doc's advice and subscribed to the Nintendo Fun Club. Number three is Cyberball, because really, what's better than robots playing football with an explosive ball? Well, how about mutants? Our number two is Mutant League Football. It's trick plays and excessive gore made football fun again, especially when you were able to murder the ref. And at number one is the classic Timeless Tecmo Bowl. They weren't able to license the names of real NFL teams, but they were able to license my heart. Oh. Medical research has come a long way in the last decade, but we're still years away from being able to alter our genes in order to lose weight. But in the meantime, Nintendo is offering up Wii Fit to keep that waistline in check. Will it replace the ab roller or bulimia? Find out in my preview. All right, I'm here with Eric, and we're going to learn a little bit about Wii Fit. What's the demographic? We've got all these new players that come in, just bought a Wii. Like, they love Wii Sports. They're going to love it. But I think it's also going to have a lot of appeal to, you know, core gamers, people who are really into gaming, too. What's sort of the mechanic behind it? The Wii Fit actually uses the Wii Balance Board. And you step on the Wii Balance Board. It's this wireless device. You put it in your living room. You set it in front of your TV. You stand on it, and it senses your motion and your balance. So if you're leaning a little to the left, leaning a little to the right, it actually knows and senses it right away. Tell me a little bit about what he's doing. Uh, so right now he's doing an exercise. There's actually over 40 activities and exercises in Wii Fit. Uh, they range from uh, strength activities, yoga, balance games. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of different stuff in Wii Fit and something a little bit for everybody. 
got it. How much exercise are you going to get from the Wii Balance Board? Actually, a ton. And a lot of the activities look a little bit easy. Like the one he was doing right there, it's just like, oh, hey, I'm just moving my arm and my leg. But the thing about it is that the Wii Balance Board can sense your motion and your sense of balance. So if you make a tiny adjustment in your balance, it knows it right away. So it's one thing to do an activity. It's another thing to do it just perfectly. And that's where the game comes in. That's why it's a lot of fun. When can we expect this? Are you going to get this game May 19th? May 19th. Yeah. Get ready to get in shape. Coming up on X-Play, our baseball double play continues with a review of MLB 08, the show. Then, we get an exclusive look at tomorrow's zero punctuation review of Devil May Cry 4 from The Escapist. And get ready to keep the beat in our review of Patapon. For the PSP, don't move. Welcome back to X Play, home of Ten Cent Beer Night and Ten Riots. It's time to head back to the ballpark with our second baseball review of the day. PlayStation exclusive MLB 08, the show is up next, and here is our review. Baseball! It's the American pastime. What could be more American than a sunny day at the ballpark? How about a day of hearing your former trainer testify against you on Capitol Hill? Don't worry, there aren't any messy legal proceedings to muddy up MLB 08, the show. Just good, clean athletes playing an old-fashioned game of pitch and catch. This is the matchup these folks came to see. Like every previous edition of the show, this year's version pretty much rides on the coattails of its predecessors. But there are a few tweaks to the gameplay. Most welcome to franchise loyalists are the improvements to pitching and batting. If you're like me, you enjoy rocking homers out of the park on a fairly regular basis. This ball is gone! But that doesn't happen in real baseball games, and most sports fans would happily sacrifice fun for realism. Your strike three called. So the new batting system allows for more accuracy. You actually have to work the pitches and try to anticipate where the ball will come based on the pitcher and the count. Pitching works the same way. Know your opponents and expose their weaknesses. You too can be the Carl Rove of video game baseball. Speaking of Carl Rove, here's another face of pure evil. In is the third baseman, Alex Rodriguez. You'll be able to see every detail of Derek Jeter's smug face in all its fully rendered glory. And out of here! Even the stadiums, stadii, look realistic. But besides these minor changes, everything is the same as last year, and the year before, and the year before that. Look, we don't think it's a bad game. We like most everything about it, like the franchise and Road to the Show mode, where you create a character and follow his career. But the only reason to upgrade to MLB 08, the show, is if A, you haven't bought any of the preceding titles, or B, you're a stat hound who absolutely must know how Howie Kendrick's game has changed in the last year. Two gone. MLB 08, the show, swings up a three. One, two. Out of five. He goes the entire way to take home the victory. Well, we've seen both reviews, and it looks like MLB 2K8 is the one to get if you have a PS3. Otherwise, you don't have much choice. Call of Duty 4's multiplayer experience can lead to some holes in walls and or controllers being thrown across rooms. Before you let your dark side get the best of you, check out this latest set of pro tips from T-Squared. What's up? This is Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor. But you may know me as T-Squared. T-Squared. I'm a member of the MLG Pro Team, Straight Ripping. And I got some tips for Call of Duty 4. Call of Duty 4. That'll have you fragging like a pro. My first tip is use the bomb as bait. Once it's planted, position yourself on the outside, and when they go to defuse it, pick them off. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. We got the bomb! It's like taking candy from a baby. If you earn an airstrike or a chopper, hold on to it, you'll be tempted to call it an early. But if you wait until after the bomb is planted, or you use it to defend your base, then your kill count is gonna rise immensely. <laughs> Ba boom, baby! My next tip is always be aware of what your teammates' perks are. 
How to run next to someone who doesn't have a UAV jammer equipped. UAV recon standing by. Cook grenades are a team's best friend. Hold down your right bumper and keep your grenade ready for the throw because the other team won't be able to throw it back at you. It's gonna blow up extremely fast. Follow these basic tips and your team will be primed for victory in the mission-based gameplay. When X-Play returns, we keep the beat in our Pat Upon review for the PSP. Plus, we'll talk to Epic VP Mark Rain about the latest version of the Unreal Engine and Gears of War 2. But first, let's take a look at who rules the safe house in today's leaderboard for Call of Duty 4. In the beginning, there was darkness. Buy direct, so call now. I like the show revamp. Uh, I also think bringing in zero punctuation and Yancey was pure genius. I love that guy. Welcome back to X-Play. We are ready to bring you a sneak peek of tomorrow's zero punctuation review from The Escapist. Today, behold the twisted mind of Ben Yahtzee Croshaw and his review of Dante, I mean, you know, Nero's latest adventure, Devil May Cry 4. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not some spectacle adjusting model railroad enthusiast who cannot function without our absolute realism at all times. Leaping eight times your own height, swinging swords the size of small cars around, and deflecting bullets with other bullets are all fine with me as long as it's entertaining. I'll even accept that getting a seven foot katana jammed through your torso is totally survivable, if a bit homoerotic. A game starts whittling on my chips, however, when it populates itself with smug self-satisfied dick spurts and starts neglecting gameplay because it's too busy letting them swagger invincibly about until I want to flatten their androgynous faces with a kayak paddle. Allow me to expand. The abominably lengthy intro cinematic contained a total of three high energy bombastic fight sequences and my entire contribution to them was to sit on my ass taking a drink every time someone defied the laws of physics. There was no reason why these fights couldn't have been playable but the game seemed afraid that I would cramp its style. It's like Devil May Cry 4 invited me out to a bar then left me alone in the corner nursing a strongbow while he busily tore up the dance floor with a giggling society girl. Eventually she was called away by her cackling friends and he came back to our table with fresh drinks and apologies but I won't forget this betrayal, oh no. Honey, Remember, you can get Zero Punctuation's full uncensored review of Devil May Cry 4 tomorrow only at EscapistMagazine.com. And X-Play will have new previews every Tuesday night. But now, let's go over to Adam, who has our latest review. All right, well, the creators of Parappa the Rapper are back with a new music game for the PSP. But instead of helping a little dog wrap its way into Sunny Funny's heart, you take a tribe to battle. Patapon is a squad-based rhythm game with RPG elements. And if that makes confuses you, hopefully our review will explain all. Take one part real-time tactics, a generous helping of rhythm and music, and a dash of playing God, and you'll end up with Patapon. You are God in this multi-genre PSP game, and you control a tribe of circular googly-eyed warshippers. And while they may look harmless, they're still your little killing machines. Whether it be enemy armies or wild boar, they're not afraid to spill some blood. But here's where it gets quirky. You control your tribe by beating war drums, sort of. By tapping the PSP buttons in a specific combination in rhythm, you are able to send your troops into battle, buoy their spirits, and summon miracles. And as an added bonus, it's kind of catchy in that nonsensical chanting kind of way. Now, it might look simple, but looks can be deceiving. Battles actually require a good deal of strategy. You need the right soldiers, the right equipment, and the right commands. The downside is that all this crafting can be pretty time consuming, but no one ever said it was easy being a deity. And don't be fooled by the cute factor. This is a serious game, and your PSP will thank you for it. So if you're looking for something innovative or just something that incorporates war drums, Patapon is your game. 
Patapon kills four wild boars out of five. Up next on X-Play, we talk with Epic VP Mark Rain about the power of the new Unreal Engine and the year's most anticipated sequel, Gears of War 2. Stay tuned. If you dig this, then you dug this, cause I'm all about the nerd life, ward life. If you dig this, then you dug this, cause I'm all about the nerd life, ward life. There's someone here. Okay, let's play a game. Welcome back to X-Play. Microsoft's keynote at GDC had Ninjas, X, and A, and Peter Molyneux, but Epic Games had to steal the show with their popular Unreal Tech and Gears 2 announcement. We recently talked with Epic VP Mark Rain about all the big news. Gears 2 was one of the biggest announcements in GDC 2008. We caught up with Epic Games VP Mark Rain to talk about the art of war. Things are just really going well. We've announced Gears of War 2. It's going to be a really spectacular game. The Microsoft keynote also showcased the Unreal Engine's ability to evolve with next-gen sizable capabilities. We're constantly improving Unreal Engine technologies. You saw in the keynote, we had a chance to get up there and show some really key, cool new features. We had the fracturing system, the new fluid system. We had the, uh, the really cool, we call it a meat cube, the soft body physics. And we had this awesome crowd system. So we're constantly improving and updating Unreal Engine technology. That's part of the reason people license Unreal Engine technology. It's a great pipeline and great tools for building content at a very reasonable price. So they're able to make really good money on things like downloadable content because it's not cost them a fortune to build new content. I don't have any great little secret tidbits for you, but I can tell you that people will be surprised a bit by Gears of War 2 and some of the things that we're doing in a, in a very positive way. Keep it on X-Play for all the up-to-the-minute grief on Gears of War 2. It never ends. If your name is Leonard Shelby, then write this down because it's time for an X-Play replay. On today's show, we reviewed Major League Baseball 2K8. Using the analog control stick for pitching and fielding might seem strange at first, but it works in the home stretch. This game got four Senate hearings out of five. We also took a look at MLB 08 The Show. Despite a new, more accurate batting system, this latest installment doesn't quite warrant another 60 bucks if you already own the 07 version. It gets three stars. And we reviewed the drum-driven pad upon. Gloria Estefan was right. The rhythm is going to get you. The PSP title is more than just a simple drum beat. There is strategy, there's customization, and of course, there are those really cute characters. It grabbed four stars out of five, and for 20 bucks, you don't have an excuse to pass this one up. All right, there's no more wind in our sales today, but we'll show off again tomorrow with another all new X Play right here at 8. On our next show, we return to the well in our review of Dynasty Warrior 6. Will it be any different than the first five? No! Oh, somebody got burned. And then we'll preview the latest chapters in the ever-popular Battlefield series. We'll take you inside the one that will cost you money, Bad Company, plus the one you can get for free, the cartoon-styled Battlefield Heroes. In case you didn't know, you're watching the Weekend Block of <laughs> X-Play. Another episode starts right now, you lucky dog. Play, the center of the gaming universe. Today on X Play, we review Dynasty Warrior 6, the latest chapter in the epic button mashing series. And we preview Battlefield Bad Company, the explosive shooter that looks to reinvent the legendary franchise. Plus, an all access look into the life of a one man gaming studio. We've got the indie game that stole the show at GDC. Brace yourself, it's game time. Welcome to X-Play, the show that is loved by 
Super delegates everywhere. Oh, man. I'm Morgan Webb. This is Adam Sessler. Yes, obviously we're playing Bully for the Wii. This is one of the mini games that's new to the game, and this is actually a lot of fun. I'm enjoying this. Ha uh ha. -huh. So I really want to point out that when I was in high school, we didn't like have a chem class like this. We only had books, and they told us to, like, to take them at their word that this stuff would actually happen in chemistry. I'm just, I am wondering what they're doing. They're just kind of adding things to pictures and stirring other sabotage. things. Oh, I missed the sabotage. I was All too busy right. explaining myself to, uh, to sabotage you. All right, now I guess we should explain what's on the show. So we're going to be reviewing <laughs> Dynasty Warriors 8. That promises some big changes, and they damn well better deliver. Hmm. Plus, we have a preview of Battlefield Bad Company, which I hear has destructible environments and gunplay. And for more warfare, we've got a preview of Battlefield Heroes. But first, let's go over to Kristen Holt, who has all of today's top stories in our gaming update. Thanks, Morgan. Take-Two Interactive wants to remain independent. This new information was revealed during an interview with Take-Two's executive chairman, Strauss Zelnick. In response to questioning regarding Take-Two's rejection of Electronic Arts' $2 billion takeover bid, Zelnick noted that he is proud of the progress Zelnick Media has made in the 10 months that they've been at Take-Two. Zelnick also added that he and his firm think Take-Two has a really bright future as an independent company. X-Play has learned exclusive new details that Darren McFadden will be the cover athlete of EA Sports NCAA Football 2009. While the game will be released on five different platforms later this year, the Arkansas running back will tackle the cover of the Xbox 360 version of the game. Be sure to tune into X-Play tomorrow when Darren McFadden joins us live in the studio to discuss all things pigskin and polygon. And finally, we have good news for Australian Wii owners. A new Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock double pack will be hitting store shelves down under exclusively. The pack includes not one, but two guitars, along with the newly remastered version of the game. During last year's holiday season, it was discovered that due to an error in manufacturing, the Australian version of Guitar Hero 3 for the Wii was outputting sound in mono. This new bundle will also make it cheaper to play multiplayer. That's all for today's gaming update. Be sure to visit us on the web at g4tv.com slash xplay to continue getting all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. But now let's go to Morgan, who has our latest harsh judgment. Thanks, Kristen. Who needs complex control schemes? The fine folks at Koei have discovered that sometimes games just need some good old-fashioned button mashing. Here is our review of the latest installment of the series that won't die, Dynasty Warriors 6. You button mashers have kept in shape because Dynasty Warriors is back for its sixth installment. There is no need to worry. I shall cut you a path to fame and glory. Actually, I'm sorry to say, you won't. They are fools. It was proclaimed that Dynasty Warrior 6 was going to be a new type of Dynasty Warrior, built from the ground up to take advantage of next-gen hardware. And while the graphics may be new, the AI, story, music, and gameplay, sadly, are not. I am come for your head! I'll start with the good news. The biggest improvement in DW6 is the amount of NPCs that appear on the screen at one time. Thanks to improved draw distance, all these peasants running towards you and their eventual death finally creates that feel of an epic battle the series has always been striving for. Same. I knew you could do it. Right on, brother. Actually, I wouldn't exactly call it a victory, because even though these armies may look daunting, they're still as dumb and lifeless as a terracotta warrior. Do you believe your wits are a match for mine? Maybe not, but it doesn't take Sun Tzu to realize there's no real strategy involved in the game other than jumping in the middle of the fray and swinging your weapon. Another victim has fallen to my plane. And swinging. Another victim has fallen to my plane. And swinging. Another victim has fallen to my plane. Capturing a base. And this base belongs to me now. Then waving your weapon around some more. I will try to live up to your example. That is unless Lu Bu shows up. You stand before me? You have courage. Screw you, Lu Bu. So unless hacking and slashing till your fingers go bloody is your cup of green tea, Dynasty Warrior 6 will be as useless as birth control for a unit. I shall fall back for now. However, we shall meet in battle again. I'm sure we will, but for now Dynasty Warrior 6 gets a 2 out of 5. 
say I called it Dynasty Warriors 8 earlier. Well, obviously, it's actually 6, though. I think it gives a good indication of what we can expect when Dynasty Warriors 8 is released. Anyway, it looks like Koei's done it again, and not in a good way. We happen to actually have some footage of a Koei development meeting that could shed some light on the recent output. Take a look. No one has any ideas? None? Koi is the company that made Dynasty Warriors 6, Samurai Warriors 2, and Samurai Warriors 2. Extreme legends. We have standards. <sighs> How are we going to go into the next year fresh, innovative, and, 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 and successful? Sir, I believe my... Shut up! on Ninja Gaiden Black, Fable, and N Plus in the download from Xbox Live Arcade. Then, get ready to level some buildings in Battlefield Bad Company. Plus, War gets a cartoony treatment in Battlefield Heroes. And we've got a preview. Stay tuned. Apple Seed X Machina on DVD. Come on, show me what you... Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7 and 10, only on G4. Welcome back to Let's Play. Now, some of you may know Bad Company is an English supergroup from the 70s, so logic would hold that you might think that Battlefield Bad Company is about aging rockers heading into a war zone, but you would be wrong. See what's in store in our preview. Let's face it, it's hard making a first-person shooter seem fresh these days. It feels like we've played through every possible skirmish, melee, and combat area. Warning! You're leaving the combat area! But the developers behind the long-running Battlefield series have a brand new installment for you. And this one has enough new elements to pique our interest. We went straight to senior producer Carl Magnus Trodsen to get the full story. The story in Battlefield Bad Company is about you play a character called Preston Marlowe. Uh, he's been, he's the new guy being placed in uh, a squad in uh, B Company, which is being bastardized into Bad Company because this is where the army puts all of their rejects. Developers spend a lot of time focusing on the single player experience, a first for the Battlefield franchise. If you see a vehicle, you can take it. If you see a helicopter fly somewhere, you can do that. And it's all up to you as a player to use your imagination. If the visuals look even better than usual, don't be surprised. This is the first game in the series built from the ground up for next-gen home consoles, specifically the PS3 and 360. And the new graphics engine allowed developers to add an important twist fully destructible environments. The cool part about the Frostbite game engine is that it enables us to have so much destruction in the world. So now we can take down trees, vegetation, there's actually uh, demolition on the ground, so you make craters from, with the big weapons, uh, all the walls. This is what we like to call tactical destruction because it will change how you play shooters. It looks like a lot of fun to us. And despite the emphasis on single player, online fans will still find plenty to love. Well, the other good parts that made Battlefield famous are there as well. You know, the huge abundances of uh, vehicles, land, air, sea, all of it, and the, the freedom to do whatever you want. And then there's a, the actual game mode has a thematic connection to the single player as well. There's no exact release date yet, but we'll have our full review for you when Battlefield Bad Company hits PS3 and Xbox 360 later this year. Battlefield with the story, what's next? Final Fantasy with fun gameplay? 
As much as we'd all like a full arcade in our house, they're sadly very expensive. Takes up a lot of room, and sometimes they smell like cotton candy bar. Fortunately, there's Xbox Live Arcade. Not only do you get the old classics, but there's some new titles available too. Here's a look at the latest content in today's download. It's time for the latest downloads to hit the Xbox 360. Off playing games, are you? Ninjas never fight the things they are intended to, like, well, other ninjas. Case in point, N+, a stylized puzzle action platformer that pits your ninja against robots from the future. With 300 boards plus a level editor, it's definitely worth wasting points and time on. Poker Smash combines everything you love about poker with everything you love about puzzle games. So, why is it called Poker Smash then? Because it's smashing the conventions of poker. <laughs> A download or two from Xbox Originals might also help you get ready for some big sequels due out this year. The Xbox classic Ninja Gaiden Black is as solid an action game as you're likely to find. And with the new installment stealthily making its way to the 360, the time couldn't be better to revisit it. You're good. You're bad. You're good. You're bad. What's that for? You're good. I knew you were going to bring me chocolates. You're bad. It's Fable. If you didn't get to play it the first time around, get to it now because Fable 2 is on its way. And if you wait until then to play the first Fable, you're going to feel like a tool. There you have it. Four titles that ought to keep you busy and away from exercise and sunlight like God intended. <laughs> so are you like Morgan to me? You were just thinking to yourself, hey, I wonder what the top selling shooters are right now. You weren't? Well, Top, we're about to tell you in today's X list. Number five is Call of Duty 4. With the new patch, they've added some very entertaining kill cams on grenades and airstrikes. But if you're a real man, you play Team Hardcore and it doesn't matter. Number four is Turning Point Fall of Liberty, the game that explores the timeline where the greatest generation is renamed the Oh Great, Thanks for Letting the Nazis Invade America generation. Number three is Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Well, you get to shoot a lot of tangos. Unfortunately, there really is no dancing. Number two is Frontline's Fuel of War, which is the completely ludicrous scenario of a war based on oil. Weird. And at number one is Army of Two. I haven't seen this much excellent tag team action since Hulk Hogan and Mr. T took on Rowdy Roddy Piper and Mr. Wonderful at the first WrestleMania. Our memories. When next play returns, we have a preview of Battlefield Heroes. Plus, we have an all-access pass to check out a one-man indie game studio. But first, let's take a look at who's rocking this week's X-Play Gamer Challenge. Here are the current leaders in Mr. Shark's epic Sarcathalon. For a quickie? Yeah. Yeah. Filter begins in 60 seconds. Pick up the phone and call now. Do you have the status of the Sam and Max season one game that's being poured over to the Wii? Welcome back to X Play and thank you for the question, Jeremy. Uh, Sam and Max, it, it does make sense that it would go to the Wii because it's an adventure game and the point and click stuff. Right. Well, we contacted Telltale Games and they said, quote, we keep hearing from fans how much they want Sam and Max for the Wii. It's something we are working on and we're getting pretty close. End quote. Pretty close. So yeah, pretty exactly. close. And, and these are the guys that developed CSI, another point and click adventure, and they did get that on the Wii, so they clearly have the technology and the tools and all that stuff for it. Right, and hopefully they'll have some new episodic content for the uh, Wii launch, and I'm guessing that they will. Yes, I'm hoping so. All right, are you tired of paying for your games? <laughs> well, for PC owners, those days may be over thanks to EA's new Play for Free model. The first no cost title out of the gate is the cartoon themed Battlefield Heroes, and here is a preview. I still remember that day. Something changed within me and my buddies that day. We became tougher. We became men. We became heroes. Sorry about that. Wrong trailer. 
No, you aren't watching a lost episode of Benny Hill. This is a newly released trailer for EA's latest spin-off, Battlefield Heroes. Unlike earlier installments in the franchise, this one is a cartoony shooter that's free to play. Senior producer Ben Cousins explains all. We didn't want to put out another realistic graphics battlefield game into the marketplace. We thought that would kind of confuse people a little bit, and the team thought it would be a really fun thing to do. And the alternative would be like another realistic, gritty World War II game, and I think we're all kind of fed up of those by now. Yep, we're definitely with you on that one. Instead, the action in Battlefield Heroes isn't based on any real war or skirmish. The setting is influenced by World War II and other conflicts of the 20th century. We've got like two factions in the game, which are kind of influenced by recognizable armies. We have uh, the Royal Army uh, versus the National Army. And there's good news for those of you who are light in the wallet. You won't have to pay any monthly fee to play. In fact, you can download the game for free on the official website. However, certain in-game items like costumes and experience boosts will be available to buy with real world money. So let's say you and I are playing the game. You're playing the game like 24 hours over the weekend. Well, I've got like a wife and kids and I don't have time to play the game. What I can do is buy an experience points booster. So over the period of two days, maybe a weekend, I get double experience points. So I can catch up with you. But I'm still having to play the game. Everything we've seen so far leads us to believe Battlefield Heroes will be a nice departure for World War II weary gamers. So when can you get your hands on it? Well, unfortunately. Unfortunately, this baby still needs some more time in the oven. Tune into X-Play for our full review when this game hits your PCs. So EA's selling experience. <laughs> We're leaving you, but only for a moment. When X-Play comes back, we'll introduce you to James Silva, a one-man show who was able to create his own Xbox 360 game using XNA, Microsoft development software. But first, take a crack at today's trivia question. No cheating. Who composed the Call of Duty 4 soundtrack? Was it A, Jesper Kidd, B, Stephen Barton, or C, Jeremy Soule? We'll have the answer right after the break. If you dig this, then you dug this, cause I'm all about the nerd life, ward life. If you dig this, then you dug this, cause I'm all about the nerd life, ward life. In the beginning, there was darkness. Before the break, we asked you who composed the Call of Duty 4 soundtrack. The answer is B, Stephen Barton. He also composed music for the Chronicles of Narnia movies and Kingdom of Heaven. Welcome back to X-Play. Microsoft's keynote at GDC was more than chainsaws. It had great news for indie developers. XNA, a toolkit allowing anyone to make 360 games, has made some big steps forward. With this program, garage designers can bring their homemade games to the Xbox community. James Silva took the stage to show off his game, The Dishwasher Dead Samurai. And we caught up with this one-man show to see how it's all done. Microsoft's XNA community is set to grow exponentially in 2008. But for now, the master of the XNA universe is James Silva, creator of the dishwasher Dead Samurai. Um, it's it's quite literally, and this sounds really cliche, but it's, it's totally a dream come true. I mean, you know, ever since I was like 10, I've, uh, I've always dreamed of making uh, video games, you know? And the, the coolest thing has been, uh, we're here at the Microsoft Lounge, and I'm, I've been watching people play my game uh, all day. It's just, it's, it's surreal. It's amazing. Fittingly enough, Silva came up with the idea for the violent menial laborer hack and slash while working as a dishwasher himself. Dishwashers get no respect, and uh, when I was a dishwasher, I, I just convinced myself that you know a video game where a dishwasher just goes crazy and, and uh, kills a bunch of bad guys is just—it's got to be the best idea for a game ever. A little bit of the crow made it in there, um, and the game itself plays like a, a stylistic action platformer. Ninja Gaiden was definitely a big influence. That game is so hard. <laughs> As for advice to XNA newcomers, James suggests keeping it simple. I would just say uh, start kind of small. Don't set out to create a, a MMO or a first person shooter or something. Um, just start with something that's uh, maybe something that would have been impressive in the 80s and uh, just work on that and you'll pull it off and you'll be proud of yourself. 
All right, we're sending this show to the glue factory, but we'll be back tomorrow with an all-new X Play and Eight. <laughs> On our next show, we get reintroduced to Ethan Thomas in our preview of Condemned Two. I hear he's sober. Ish. Ish. Then we'll talk with Arkansas Razorback star Darren McFadden, who we just revealed to be on the cover of NCAA Football 09 for the Xbox 360. Plus, we'll go head to head to talk game ratings, what they really mean, what you should know about them, and why Metacritic is the one to rule them all. Plus, we'll have an update on Mr. Shark's latest challenge, the demented Halo 3 triathlon. It is demented. I think that really is an appropriate word. It's quite difficult, and people are getting amazing times on this. Well, you are watching the weekend edition of X Play. Good luck. Another episode starts right now. X Play, TV's most watched video game show. Today on X Play, we preview the ultra violent Condemned 2 Bloodshot for the Xbox 360. Is this nightmarish sequel just as scary? Plus, we go head to head to decide once and for all do video game review scores matter? Plus, we've got FaceTime with star running back Darren McFadden. He joins us live in the studio to talk football and video games. All that and more. It's game time. Morgan Webb. And I'm Adam Sessler. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Thursday, March 6th. On today's show, we'll talk with Darren McFadden, the face of NCAA Football 09 for the Xbox 360. Plus, we'll take on some crazies in our preview of Sega's Condemned 2, and we'll go head to head to talk game review scores, what they mean, and why the system is flawed. But first, Adam's got all the day's top headlines in our gaming update. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. Well, owners of the Xbox 360 version of Bully Scholarship Edition are experiencing major glitches. The game is currently suffering through frame rate, audio, and freezing issues. At the moment, it appears that these glitches are only affecting people who own an older Xbox 360. Sam Hauser, co-founder and president of Rockstar Games, has since issued a statement apologizing for the mishap. Hauser says he is horrified at what happened and noticed that these bugs were never experienced during the game's Q&A process, adding that Rockstar is currently working around the clock to rectify this situation. Well, Ziff Davis Media, publisher of magazines including Electronic Gaming Monthly and Games for Windows, has filed for bankruptcy. In a recent press release, the company revealed their plan to reduce their debt by filing Chapter 11 petitions in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court. The company has asked the court for permission to continue paying employee wages and salaries in addition to providing employee benefits without interruption. By filing for the court's supervised process, the company's reorganization process will be accelerated and allows Ziff Davis Media to continue operation. Army of Two has apparently been banned in Germany. An organization called the USK, Germany's version of the ESRB, has refused the classification of the recently released co-op shooter from EA. Without an official classification from the US K-Board, Army of Two won't be available for sale at retail stores throughout the country. What's interesting is that the US K recently cleared Grand Theft Auto 4 and a handful of other shooters. Lucky for you, there's nothing to worry about because you don't live in Germany. Probably. And finally, Jeff Gertzman, former editorial director of GameSpot.com, has announced that he started work on his own website called GiantBomb.com. Jeff will work closely with his friend and former GameSpot colleague, Ryan Davis. But what better way to get all the details than to speak with Jeff Gertzman himself? So, Jeff, welcome to our show. Adam. Hey, so, thanks for having me on, man. It's a, it's a very exciting day. I, I, I imagine it must be. So, what's the gist of GiantBomb.com? Well, you know, GiantBomb.com, what we want it to be is a fun video game website. You know, too many sites out there, you know, too many, too much reporting is going into covering all the business side of stuff, and it, it's getting a little stale. So we want to get out there and, and talk about games, because we like games, and, and, and as I've been blogging on my own, it, it just seems like there's an audience out there, that, and they like games, and, and they're not being met. You know, their needs aren't being met by what's out there right now. So we're, we're building a site and launching today the first phase which is gonna be a blog, sort of like the blog I've been running, uh, but actually we're gonna be taking people behind the scenes with a video series called How to Build a Bomb, because we want the Department of Homeland Security to read the site pretty regularly. 
Um, and this is going to take people behind the scenes where they can see as we're building the real site kind of what the thought processes are going into it and they can also help shape it. And when the site's finally up, are we going to see reviews? Are we going to see blogs? What's, what's, what's the content going to be like? Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be reviews. You know, it's, it's going to be an independent voice for reviews and, and uh, a very opinionated one. You know, we're, we're looking to just kind of say, hey, look, this is what we think of these games. And you're not always going to agree with us, and that's great. Uh, you'll be able to contribute uh, your own voice to the, the kind of cacophony of stuff, and, and hopefully we'll all be able to buy the best games. No, hopefully that, that, that will be the end result. Well, congratulations, Jeff. Um, knowing Thanks. your personality, this should be a very exciting and fun website. Good luck. And, and when will it be operational? What's your goal? Uh, well, the blog will be launching today at GiantBomb.com, but then the main site will be launching this summer, so we've got a little bit of time. All right, well, we'll talk to you then. All right, well, that's all for today's gaming update. Be sure to visit us on the web at G4TV.com slash XPlay to continue getting all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. Now let's go over to Morgan, who has our most disturbing preview of the day. Thank you, Adam. Condemned Criminal Origins is one messed up violent game. It's so disturbing that the game's protagonist, Ethan Thomas, couldn't even get sober for the sequel. Well, we hope we can make it through this preview. Let's face it, you've seen better days. Your outside looks like the inside of a bag of dead rats. You're in the right place for now, though. A place where moral decay grows on the sides of Drear like a stinking fungus. You're in Bukowski country, baby. Hey, where are you going? You're not ready to leave. This is where the action is. <laughs> Condemned 2 Bloodshot continues the journey of Serial Crimes Unit investigator Ethan Thomas as he searches for evil through a microscope of truth. All right, so Ethan's microscope is a glass of liver shriveler laced with narcotics. He has other investigative techniques. <clears throat> what? He's a bum. He's using available resources. One of the first things you'll notice in Condemned 2 is the overhauled fight mechanics, tuned to visceral perfection. Combos, power punches, and environmental kills, which utilize elements of the game space to finish adversaries, add to melee detail. Huh, I should have used the turd style? Debris and firearms are available, but Condemned 2 seems to discourage all-out assault in favor of a methodical pace. It's easy to die fast in this town. Environments are brushed lushly in fear. The city is a living carcass, breathing fitfully, surprising you with coughing spasms of attack. Evidence gathering has been expanded to include more detailed forensic techniques that rely on varying degrees of player participation. Television is also inserted into the game. You'll have to adjust the antenna yourself to see the truth clearly. Forget the past, how we used you, and how we destroyed your life. Condemned 2 thankfully capitalizes on its past strength and seems to ante up on all levels. We're looking forward to rustling a few trash cans with Ethan next week. Coming up on X-Play. We bite the hand that feeds us as we go head to head to see if game ratings really matter. Then we try to keep up as we get some super fast face time with Darren McFadden, the new face of NCAA Football 09 for the Xbox 360. Plus, this week's X-Play Gamer Challenge is only half over and we've got an update on the current leaders. Find out how you can join the fight. Stay right here. <laughs> You know, basically. Welcome back to X Play. Like the movie business reviews can make or break a title's release, but does this current system actually work as intended? Well, let's go head to head to find out. Whether developers like it or not, games often live and die by their review scores. <laughs> Years worth of hype can be destroyed with a handful of low ratings. Just ask Factor 5. But with the popularity of sites like Metacritic and Game Rankings, gamers don't even have to read reviews anymore. Just look at an average score. Who do you trust? And what did the scores really mean? 
Joining us today from San Francisco, site director for the entire 1UP Network, Sam Kennedy. And also hey. joining us today, senior editor from GamePro Magazine, Sydney Schumann. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, let's start off with you, Sam. Uh, you guys recently changed your numerical scores for games to a letter score. What was behind that? Well, you know, what we figured was that, you know, I mean, we were, over the years, we've always had the numerical scores. And what we realized that, you know, we, we always kind of used five as the average. But, um, you know, kind of in the industry, a lot of other people weren't. And, um, and also, like, a lot of the readers didn't understand that five was average. So we kind of figured, you know what, we need to go with a scale that everybody understands. Everybody knows that a C is average and A is excellent. So, you know, we, we kind of wanted to move things forward in that direction. Now, Sydney, obviously, there are sites like Metacritic and Game Rankings, which have become very, very important to a lot of the people who are making the games. They want to see that average score, which we all sort of make up that average there. Um, at the same time, though, are we losing something? Because we actually write reviews. We don't just apply scores to things. We do, I think. Um, actually, myself, I'm a, more of a fan of uh, considering game reviews as more of a consumer offering. Like, I'm not myself personally a fan of reviewing games and looking at them as kind of an art medium. I know that's kind of an unpopular position right now. At GamePro, we really look at reviews as, is the game fun? Is it worth buying? And I mean, everyone's got their own take on it, and it sounds like 1UP has their, their new take on it now, too. So. Um, Nate, actually, Sam, I was about to say, so that's interesting. It, it's more of a consumer-oriented for Sydney, but what are your standards for rating a game? You know, I think it's it's pretty much the same. I mean, we honestly look at, is the game fun? Is it entertaining? And um, price does play a factor, too, because, you know, you have to, we have such a wide variety of prices in the games industry from, like, the Xbox Live Arcade kind of games to the to the more high-end retail games. So, you know, we, we look at, it's is it fun? And, you know, what what's kind of the value of that title? Now, obviously, with the people who are big fans of games, they seem to react quite strongly when we go in certain directions on certain types of titles. Um, City, what are kind of the, the criteria that you look at when you're reviewing a game to make sure that you know you're you're fair, but you're also informing people about it? Well, I think I mean I think Sam said price, and that's that is a crucial thing. I mean, that's at the end of the day, do you, games are expensive, right? You, you only have a budget for a limited number, so that's a, that's a crucial thing. For GamePro, it's very, very focused on fun. How fun is the game? That's, that's actually, uh, for the most part, we dropped everything else, graphics, sound, things like that. It's fun. Games are about fun. They're not trying to be movies, or they shouldn't be trying to be movies. It's not about making the ultimate cinematic experiences. Is it fun? And that's what we do, and that's really what our focus is. It's fun. Um, now, now, Sam, obviously, um, all of us love games, but, you know, we always have our, our, our certain predilections. We, we like certain games, genres over others. How do you deal with that kind of sense of built-in preference among your editors when they're reviewing games? Right, right. Well, we always try to find the, the experts in any kind of genre. So, you know, if we have, like, a sports game, then it's going to go to someone who's a sports expert and kind of so on. And, and you know, I mean, we want to find people who are really you know, passionate about the, the, the games that they're playing so, you know, they can, you know, not only passionate but experienced so that they can kind of, you know, judge it as, you know, how does it compare to other titles on the market in that same genre. Now, um, obviously, we're not doing these things in a vacuum. People are paying attention to the ratings that we're giving games. Um, City, how do you deal with publishers and sometimes even developers that take exception to the scores that you've given to some of those games? Well, I'll be the first to say that it does happen, and I'm not going to name names because I don't think it's important, yeah. but uh, at the same time, uh, at the end of the day, hey, it's an opinion, right? Like, I'm a firm believer in, uh, in, in different reviewers having different takes on games. For instance, Assassin's Creed is a fantastic example. We gave it, I believe, a perfect score. That was what that, our reviewer, who made a very strong argument, that was a fantastic game, Assassin's Creed. Yet, I believe 1UP gave it sort of a good score, but not a tremendous score. I thought they backed it up really well, too. There's, there's, there's multiple angles, and really, if it's backed up properly in a review, it's all relevant. Which I think also really leads to one of the things I keep on trying to say, that people shouldn't always rely on just one source. Read a, you know, a few of them and get the sense of what everyone's saying about it. That's a much easier way to, to make that, that decision. Um, Sam, just, just so you can also respond as well, um, how do you deal with, you know, angry d developers and publishers out there? Yeah, you know, it happens sometimes, but, you know, you know it, again, it is, uh, it's an opinion, uh, it's one person's opinion, and to be honest, like, if everybody had the same exact opinion and the same exact score, then, you know, things would be kind of boring, I think. <laughs> all right, well, guys, thanks so much for all that. I really enjoyed this discussion. Um, Sam, if you wouldn't mind just staying on for one quick uh, question we had. Uh, by absolute coincidence, sure. there was obviously the announcement from Ziff Davis yesterday that they're filing Chapter 11. One Up is, of course, part of the Ziff Davis empire. Um, how are things over there? Is there any actual impact on you guys right now? Oh, 
Yeah, you know, to be honest, for us day to day, it doesn't change things at all. Like, you know, for, I mean, from personally speaking, I think, you know, it's actually kind of a good thing because, you know, we want to, you know, we want to focus on what we do and kind of let the courts or the lawyers take care of like the financial stuff. And, you know, for us day to day, it doesn't change a thing. So it's actually, you know, getting rid of our debt in, in a lot of ways is a, is, is a really good thing. So we can kind of just focus right. on moving forward. Well, thank you so much, Sam. Please give my best to everyone over there. I hope everything works thanks. out for you guys. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right, now let's send it back over to Morgan. We've got to take a quick break, but first take a crack at today's poll question. Which game review method do you prefer? Is it A, a 10-point scale, B, five stars, or C, letter grades? Head on over to g4tv.com slash xplay and tell us what you think. We'll have your answers in just a few minutes. Coming up on X-Play, we get some FaceTime with running back Darren McFadden, the new cover athlete of NCAA Football 09 for the Xbox 360. Stay with us. X-Play, one of iTunes' best podcasts of 2007. So call now. Welcome back to X-Play. Please don't blink or you might miss our next guest. He ran the 40-yard dash in an amazing 4.33 seconds. Former University of Arkansas running back and future first-round draft, Darren McFadden. It's that time of year again when college superstars are drafted into the NFL and future hopefuls are recruited by the nation's top college football programs. Being featured on the box of a successful video game franchise is an honor, and this year is no exception. EA's NCAA Football 09 will feature exclusive cover athletes for each platform, and gracing the Xbox 360 version will be former Razorback and future NFL superstar Darren McFadden. Joining us today, two-time All-American running back from the University of Arkansas, Darren McFadden. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me here today. Now, congratulations. Now, you have been selected to represent EA and be featured on the cover. What's that like? Um, you know, it's just a great honor. It's like, for me, it's like a dream come true. Um, growing up, playing this game all the time, and then just being on the cover of a game with guys like Reggie Bush, Sean Alexander, Carson Palmer, and those guys I know. They were all great college players, you know. Just a great honor for me. Did you ever think you were going to be on the cover of a video game? Um, growing up, I would have never thought this yeah. was one of my wildest <laughs> dreams. So it's, for me, it's just, it's just a great honor. I like the action shot they give you there, too. You're really, you're really going for it. <laughs> so what kind of games do you actually enjoy playing? I, obviously, you enjoy playing football games. Yeah, this, the NCAA is one of my main ones. But I like games like um, Grand Theft Auto, yeah. Halo, games like that. You like playing the social games where you can sit and play with your friends? Yeah, you know, you get kind of competitive sometimes, but it's all fun. <laughs> so talk about what it's like to play as yourself in a video game. Um, it's crazy, you know, sitting there playing it. Sometimes I get mad because I feel like um, I make a run that I might get tackled or something, but I feel like I should have broke the tackle or something, so it's different sometimes. <laughs> So, so he doesn't he doesn't behave exactly the way you would behave. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> when you mess up, you're like, no, don't do that to me. You're my clone. <laughs> what team were you a big fan of when you were growing up? Um, like, well, growing up for me, I was mostly just a Players fan. You know, I liked the guys like John Elway, Terrell Davis, and the Broncos. Um, Cordell Stewart. I was a Steelers fan. You know, so I like watching guys like that play. And what teams would you play with when you played this when you were a kid? Um, Arkansas, you know, but me being from the state of Arkansas, and um, it was always my dream to go to the University of Arkansas and play, so anytime I played a game like this, it was Arkansas. You gotta represent your home. Now, what round do you think I'm going to be drafted in? Um, if it was me picking first round. <laughs> That's a very diplomatic answer. We know where do you think you're gonna where do you think you're gonna go? Oh, I heard so much stuff. <laughs> I don't know what to think anymore right now. You know, um, just sit back and wait for draft day to come. All right, best of luck. We hope you do very well in your rookie season. You at home, stay right there. X Play is going to be back in just a minute. If you dig this, then you dub this, because I'm all about the nerd life, board life. If you dig this, then you dub this. Cause I'm all about the nerd life, ward life. Ah! Welcome back to X 
play. Now, earlier in the show, we asked what game review scale you like best. Well, right now, the 10-point scale has 0%. Our five-star system scored 100% to the vote. And letter grades, that got a goose egg. That's because our way, it's the right way. We're always right. But now, let's go over to Morgan, who's got the results of our latest challenge. In these supposedly grueling Ironman triathlons, all the participants have to do is swim, ride, and run a measly 140.2 miles in sunny Hawaii. In the Sarcathlon, Spartans like you have it a little harder, what with the grab, hammer climbs, and sharp shooting fusion cores in the perpetual twilight of the standoff map. Let's take a mid-competition look at the current leaders for the latest Mr. Sark Gamer Challenge. The Sarcathlon is in full swing, and Spartans have turned out in droves to see who's the baddest of them all. We thought we'd take a moment to watch some Sarcathlon antics and answer a few questions that have been coming up. So far, the fastest of the fast are not only finding innovative ways to shave time, they're sniping the eight hidden fusion cores from Gravity Hammer Tower and nailing the four targets from the Nade Toss Crate without even breaking a sweat which is good since sweat tends to pool up in the ankles of the Mark VI. The Sarcathlon closes its doors on Tuesday, March 11th at midnight, so keep those saved films coming. If you've already submitted a film but think you can do it quicker, send it in. We want the fastest runs, and those don't happen on the first try. And remember, you're not just playing for glory. The best athletes will receive Jinx clothing for gamers and geeks. Check it out at Jinx.com. And be sure to tune in this Tuesday night when X-Play presents Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. We will show you the history behind the Rainbow Six franchise, exclusive never-before-seen footage, multiplayer gameplay, and much more. Your mission starts Tuesday night at 8. And check out G4TV.com slash Rainbow Six to pre-order your copy and for more info on Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Now that is it for today, but be here tomorrow for another all-new X play at 8 p.m. On our next show, we hit the beach, the sexy beach in a Made in Japan expose. That country has issues. Like Newsweek. Then we get some portable Halo and check out Ben Heckendorn's Xbox laptop workshop and will work for games. Plus, we'll review Frontline's Fuel of War and Battle the Commies for Precious Oil. And we'll have a world premiere hands-on demo of the return of that other big Nintendo franchise, Mario Kart for the Wii. You're watching the weekend edition of X Play. Another episode starts right now. See you soon. Thanks for watching. X Play, TV's most watched video game show. Today on X Play, we've got the world premiere hands on demo of Mario Kart Wii, the new sequel that's bigger, faster, and online. Plus, we've got adults only fun in Japanese import Sexy Beach 3. And in Will Work for Games, we show you how you can get Halo on the go in Ben Heckendorn's Modding Paradise and our review of Frontline's Fuel of War for the Xbox 360. It's game time! Play, the only video game show that stays crispy and melt. Yum. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Morgan Webb. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Friday, March 7th. On today's show, we've got a review of Frontline's Fuel of War, a game with a plot line more depressing than dead kittens. Then we'll take our Halo to go, thank you. We visit Ben Heckendorn's Xbox Laptop Studio in Wilworth for Games. Plus, we have an unspeakably body preview of Sexy Beach 3. You know you want it. But first, Morgan, what? I'm banishing you to the realm of the gaming update. Apple's CEO Steve Jobs recently revealed their new software development kit for the iPhone. Yes, the Jesus phone will soon feature games, including EA's Evolutionary Sims 4 and Sega's Tilt Controlled Super Monkey Ball. Virtually anyone can download the SDK and pay the $99 entry fee to join Apple's developer program. Electronic Arts and Sega aren't the only game publishers and developers who will have a crack at the iPhone, though. John Carmack of id Software has confirmed they have already applied to work on iPhone games. 
Video game publisher and distributor Infogrames is looking to acquire the remaining outstanding stock of Atari. With a stable of franchises that include Alone in the Dark, Dragon Ball Z, and Test Drive, Atari says they plan to thoroughly evaluate the new proposal with their board of directors. Infogrames also recently made headlines when they hired former Sony Worldwide Studios president Phil Harrison to be its president. As we reported yesterday, gamers who are playing the Xbox 360 version of Rockstar's Bully Scholarship Edition have experienced frame rate and audio glitches. Rockstar has since released a statement regarding these issues saying, quote, we will be releasing a title update through Xbox Live within the next week that we are confident will rectify the problem. We apologize wholeheartedly for the inconvenience that this matter has caused some owners of the game. The recently released PSP title God of War Chains of Olympus will not be ported to the PlayStation 2 anytime soon. Ready at Dawn, the game's developer confirmed on their website that Chains of Olympus will be their last God of War and their last PSP game as they plan to move on to other projects on other consoles. Whether or not Sony will ask another developer to port the title remains to be seen. That is all for today's gaming update. Be sure to visit us on the web at g4tv.com slash xplay to continue getting all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. But right now, grab your driving gloves. It's time for our world premiere demo of Mario Kart Wii. game of Mario Kart here. Mario, of course, is coming in April, and we're very excited. They've got some new tracks. Ooh, they have some old tracks <laughs> to play with. I'm doing a little bit better this time, I have to say. I wasn't doing so well last time around. Yeah, I, uh, we're doing all right. Yeah, this is, I have to say, playing this game where we're, we're using the nunchuck, it doesn't play as differently on the Wii as, say, Super Smash Brothers did, but I happen to like just holding the nunchuck in my hand. It's a little more sort of comfortable than holding an entire controller that can kind of wear yourself out and you can weave like you want to do when you're playing a driving game. And it will come with the uh, wheel which you insert the Wiimote into, right. um, but we of course don't have that yet because no. it's not out yet. And we can at least safely say that it works just fine with the Wiimote itself. You know, some of the peripherals have been a little bit dicey as of late. And you, yeah, you can play with the GameCube controller and it works very similar. This is, you know, it's actually very easy. You just basically control with the analog stick on the nunchuck and... Um, yeah, I, I have to say, I don't think I would actually go to the GameCube controller. I originally thought I would, yeah. but I'm, I'm really enjoying doing it this way. Um, there's not, oh yeah, the one thing I think it's worth noting is that you're on a motorcycle there, Morgan. Yeah, and I can do, I can pop a wheelie. Hold on one second. Oh, that's a wall. I'm going to pop a wheelie. And that's pretty much the <laughs> most motion sensitive thing that we've noticed in the game so far is, you know, jumping up right there to do a wheelie. All right. That was nice. And moving on. So okay. Frontline's Fuel of War pits America and Europe against China and Russia in a battle for oil, which makes me wonder where Australia fits into all these alliances. And if these are the oil wars that tore the country apart in Mad Max, well, let's hope our review has the answers. We all want to know what the future holds. And as luck would have it, we get a glimpse into the year 2024 in Frontline's Fuel of War. But don't get too excited. It's not all robot maids and flying skateboards and segways. Instead, it's more of a massive global energy crisis caused by the depletion of the world's oil supply. Fun! As the story goes, we've gone and squandered our non-renewable resources, and now everyone is fighting over the remaining oil. Boy, wouldn't that suck. Anyway, there are two factions in this totally fictional scenario, the Western Coalition and the Red Star Alliance, AKA the Commies. Make the Red Star wish they stayed the hell home. Now, if you can get past the total improbability of running out of oil, there's some awesome futuristic action. New soldiers are equipped with all kinds of weapons. You'll find something to suit your every attack. Rifles and pistols and grenades, oh my. The only drawback is that there's only one mode, Frontline. Your goal is to capture checkpoints and objectives in order to move your Frontline closer to the enemy base. In the single player campaign, you have a total of seven missions, each of which can be completed in under an hour. Sounds a little underwhelming? Well, that's where the multiplayer steps up. Everything is opened up in multiplayer. Here you can spend hours upon hours as you take control of armored vehicles and uncover all kinds of fun gadgets. The dystopian world is your oyster. 
And while there are still a few issues associated with the multiplayer game, it's good enough that you can look past those rough spots and enjoy the bleak future. Frontline's Fuel of War launches four missiles out of five. A writer, I believe it was Tolstoy, once asked war, what is it good for? Now that question is not rhetorical. The answer is video games. Frontlines is just the latest title to embrace the harsh realities of combat. Here's our X-list of the top five games of war. Number five is Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War, the PC real-time strategy game that took the series off the table. At number four is the game we just reviewed, Frontlines Fuel of War. If the apocalypse has remote control mini choppers that can kill, I'm so in. And number three is World of Warcraft, which I understand is popular in some circles. Mm. Right ahead of that is Gears of War, which paints a future of roided up super soldiers who occasionally bust a rhyme. And our number one is God of War. Kratos doesn't have time to fight armies. He has to take down the gods. Army of one indeed. All right, stay where you are. We'll be right back with more right after we get the bills paid. Mm. Coming up on X-Play. Get your gaming on the go with Will Work for Games. We go inside custom console creator Ben Heckendorn's Xbox Laptop Studio. Then, put some sunblock on your bikini area. We're headed to the adults only sexy beach. Three, that is. Plus, our virtual audience is armed with questions and we're packing answers. Stay tuned. <laughs> Google and Microsoft make the bid for Dig. The feed starts in 60 seconds. Thanks a lot for that. Thank you. Welcome back to X-Play. Of course, I like my Xbox 360, but a business professional such as myself could really use it on the go, like, you know, while driving. Well, thanks to Ben Heckendorn, that dream can come true, as well as having one-handed controllers, portable Ataris, and whatever else your mind can imagine. This one-man operation does the impossible for the right price. Take a look at how it's done in this Will Work for Games. Verona, Wisconsin, population roughly 9,000. Aside from being hometown USA and the home of the Optimist Club Friends of Youth, it's also the residence of console modification guru Ben Heckendorn, who is living proof that if your dream job in the gaming industry doesn't exist, well, just make it up. Well, it was about eight years ago, and I thought, I'm gonna try something new, I want a new hobby. Anyway, so I'm like, okay, I will try making this portable Atari video game system. And at the time, I, I had a very basic idea about electronics. Like, I knew which end of the Saturn iron to hold. That was about it. Over the course of a couple months, I cobbled together this Atari portable using an original Atari shell. And then after that, I would branch off to other systems, such as the PlayStation, Nintendo, and recently the Xbox. So I try to do things that the community appreciates and enjoys. I think, you know, maybe more so that I might kind of have my finger on what gamers like than large companies. And uh, like with the Xbox, um, I like to make things that inspire people's imaginations and kind of like, oh yeah, that's really cool, you know? Things they appreciate, and I think people like, like it when I do it because it's separated from the, you know, the big corporate world or whatever. You're probably saying to yourself, I could never do what Ben does. Guess I'll keep climbing the management ladder at Arby's. Hold on there, horsey sauce. It might be easier than you think. I'm surprised someone hasn't come along and done much better than me. So I would encourage people, if they have an interest in the subject, to um, read up on it, uh, take classes. Uh, we're just using the internet. There's so much information on the internet. Anyone that takes the time can do it. And it's an interesting hobby, and you could even make some money off of it. Should you, too, become a world-class modder, never forget where you came from. Remember, this used to be your hobby. I very rarely build these projects for myself. And if I do build something for myself, it's usually something like big that I can have around the house. I made a Neo Geo arcade machine, for instance, which is a lot of fun. Now the big thing I want to do is I want to build my own pinball machine from the ground up. And so I thought, hmm, what could the theme be? It has to be a theme. And like three seconds later, I thought, oh, Bill Paxton pinball. Game over, man. You know, they do things a little different in Japan. Here we have beach names like Bizro, Pebble, and Long. In Japan, they have beach names like Futaba, Otaru Dream, and Sexy. 
which is why I'm moving to Japan tomorrow. Let's take a little trip in this preview of Sexy Beach 3. Are you sick of winter savaging the circular inhabitants of your briefs, reducing them to sadly withered figs incapable of coital glory? How about you let X-Play take your formerly formidable fruit to a pixelated paradise known as Sexy Beach? Sexy Beach. Sexy Beach 3 is a seduction simulator, a wildly popular genre in Japan, a country obsessed with manner tradition and honor. Sweet silos of salacious sagacity. On Sexy Beach, exotic fruit sways on languid trees. But don't be hasty, some may not quite be ripe. Gratuitous dialogue screens deliver you a relatively simple path to your new friend's libidinal hometown. Your first physical contact with our tender gender digital vendor of Amore as you applying a coat of Lube de Soleil to her sun vulnerable epidermis. A few laughs, a few lotions, and the lactose-loaded petrol points of infancy really develop a life of their own. As the ladies swim, jump rope, and volley your balls, all for your creepy consideration. After a lot of mouse-click-driven flirtation, you'll finally become a seasoned savant of the sexy beaches. It is then that you will finally be worshipped, like Gogana Tahiti, except instead of fine art, it's just poorly coded digital porn. Claim thine booty, Admiral! Your seamen await your command! The Japanese don't seem to give a Shinto about how their oddly excessive depictions of sex are seen when compared to the rigid conformity of their society, making it all the more interesting when it's made in Japan. Returns, we'll catch up with you, our virtual audience. But first, let's take a look at who's carrying the big lumber in today's leaderboard for MLB 2K8. It's not a game. It's Ninja Warrior. One of GQ's 10 reasons we pick up the phone and call now. Welcome back to X-Play. It's Friday night, which means I'm barely holding it together long enough to finish the show. Soon I'll be arrested for public drunkenness, public urination, or public transportation. Yeah, well, more than likely to be the trifecta. But before we add to Adam's rap sheet, let's catch up and welcome our virtual audience. Joining us tonight is Matt from California. Matt, what's on your mind? Um, do you guys get a lot of negative feedback on games review if people disagree with you? It yes. yes, yes, it I mean, as we happens. talked about yesterday in the head-to-head -head games, are opinions, you know, our reviews are opinions, and so we know that what we say isn't necessarily going to be everybody's opinion, but there are you know, degrees of niceness in which people could respond to our opinion. Yeah, I, I like to call it sometimes with our message board posters, it's the Les Miserables syndrome, where you spent $60 on a game, yep. you probably spent 30, maybe 40 hours playing that game, you're going to convince yourself that you did the right thing in your time and your money, and so you resent it when you are told that you actually didn't have a good time. Yeah, and we're actually open to well-reasoned opinions about oh, yeah. uh, video games. If you want to say your opinion and support it and back it up with logic, then we're more than happy to listen to you. And one day we'll get one of them. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Matt. Next, we've got Chris coming at us from Texas. What can we do for you, Chris? 
How you doing, Morgan? I actually do have a quick question for you guys. What's the latest on the Take Two EA merger, and do you guys feel like it'll affect anything? We actually are seeing a lot of consolidation in the video game industry. I mean, it's a huge financial outlay for a company to make a video game, so it makes sense that everybody's trying to kind of glom together. Exactly. I mean, it's right now Take Two saying that they're not going to let them do it, and right. we haven't heard much out of EA saying that they're going to make another attempt for a hostile takeover. The most important thing, though, is right now it's not going to really affect anything. GTA 4 is still going to come out on time, and I, you know, whatever changes it might impact will be quite down the line. Yes. All right, wait, up next we have Peter from Canada. He wants to talk Smash Brothers. Go ahead. Hey, uh, have you tried the online play for Super Smash Brothers Brawl yet? And did you like it? And do you think it was worth the wait? There was there wasn't that much extra wait. I guess the first well, time there was, got yeah, I think back we a little did bit. delay it a few times yeah. here. But the online, if yeah. we delayed it for the online, it was worth the wait. Yes. Um, it's seamless. I know. I, I, to be honest, I wasn't expecting this from Nintendo. I thought this was a big stumbling block. Well, Nintendo does very well with its games, but they haven't really been pushing the online environment. So you were expecting it to be a little choppy and just not quite up to snuff. But it's seamless. Yeah, which so, is great. Yeah. All right, Pete is up next, asking about the new XNA from GDC. What's up, Pete? So I was going to ask you, what is the XNA and can anyone make a game? All right, what is the XNA? Well, it's a tool set right. that helps you make kind of small Xbox Live Arcade type games. It stands for, I believe is X stands for XNA. Yes. No. No. No acronym. No, no or not acronym. An acronym. It's all right. like techie and funny and stuff like that. <laughs> um, can, I, I asked this question myself because I want to yeah. know if I can make a game with it. Not everyone can. You have to have some programming skills. Obviously, you have to have some creativity. So you can give a shot at it, but you probably need some training also. But you know, it's going to be a great way to learn if you've always wanted to be a game developer. It's going to be a great way for you to learn. There's going to be a lot of help online that you're going to be able to access. So it's going to work out for. Exactly. Yeah, so get on it. Go start making games. Now. Well, loyal viewers, thanks for all your questions. And we've had a great week with a lot of reviews. If only there were some way we could live it all over again. <sighs> this week we reviewed Army of Two. The co-op gameplay in this shooter is superb, and the fact that you can fling your gun out earns it four diamond-studded barrels. We also reviewed the video game version of the hit show Lost. This was about as fun as really being stranded on an island. It got two Dharma stations out of five. Then we saw MLB 2K8. This baseballer continues its winning streak with some improved pitching and fielding. It weighs four stars home. Another baseball game we took for a spin was MLB 08, the show. This yearly update, while strong, doesn't quite add enough polish and new features to warrant an upgrade. It puts three runs on the board. Then we banged a gong and got it on with Patapon. The rhythm-based PSP game drummed its way into our hearts with an innovative mix of RTS and BATS. It nabbed four stars. And and we review Dynasty Warriors 8 or 6 or 7. Really, this is the same game we've seen for over 10 years. It button mashes its way to only two stars. And finally, we saw Frontline's Field of War. The single player campaign is too short, but the online multiplayer and the vast array of weapons makes this dystopian future one we can all cross our fingers for. Frontline's get four oil barrels out of five. On Tuesday night, X-Play presents Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Team Rainbow heads back to Sin City to explore the darker side of Vegas in this highly anticipated sequel. We'll show you the brand new storyline, exclusive never-before-seen footage from the game, expanded multiplayer gameplay, and much more. Your mission starts Tuesday night at 8. Check out g4tv.com slash rainbow6 to pre-order your copy and for more info on Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. All right, well, that's it for today, but yep. we'll be back with an all-new X-Play this Monday at 8. And on that show, we review Super Smash Bros. Brawl and see if it really is the greatest fan service game ever. Plus, we check in with Bob and Steve in another all-new episode featuring some poorly done secret agenting. Then someone's going to end up meeting the business end of of a glaive when we check out Dark Sector. All right, well, that does it for our weekend X-Play replay. Thanks for watching. See you next week. We'll be here.